BT3600 is coming. What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? It is a new podcast. My name is Ryan E. Moore, but joining me is... Ashton underscore stem. What up, guys? Yes. Yes. Dude, we have been talking about this this podcast specifically for like months. (laughs) More than... Almost, almost every year, actually. Yeah, yeah. It's it's been a while. (laughs) It's been a long time coming. Um... But in this episode, what are we talking about, man? Um, we are talking about uh, TV shows. Uh, lots and lots of TV shows. Our favorite TV shows, past or present. Yes, we are. Great. Yes, we are. <laughs> um, yeah, dude. It. So, this is the first episode. It, like, are we just going straight into the topic? Or are we? Do we kind of want to intro it? Like, I don't know. I guess we didn't talk about this part at the beginning of, the, of you know, prepping this. Something we should have talked about before. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Quick um, rundown. Quick rundown. <laughs> this is a new show. It's called PT Thirty Six Hundred. Thirty Six Hundred is Thirty Six Hundred seconds, which equi- equals out to one hour. The show is one hour long. We're gonna talk about TV shows. For one hour. That is how the show goes. That is all that it... That's all it really needs to explain right there. There you go. That's it. It's a weekly show. Yeah. And it will be hosted by Ashton and myself. And sometimes maybe even some other people might join us. Because this is a lot easier to do. This is a full on mm-hmm. audio podcast. You guys can download it on iTunes. You can download it on Podbean. It's available there. If you're watching on YouTube, there's links in the description below for all social media as well. But... In this episode, we're talking about TV shows, and uh, dude, I'm ready. I'm ready for this, man. I've been actually looking forward to actually having an audio version of a podcast because it's very chillax. Like I don't gotta, yes. I don't gotta prep myself. Like I, I'm just like ready to go. I just gotta plug in the microphone. Here we go, right? Yeah, dude. I don't. I'm gonna. Uh, I don't have to clean myself up after looking like I've been going out of a dumpster. You know? Exactly. Yeah. I Trash can just panda. Look like that. Trash panda. Sad uh, panda. <laughs> um so there you go i explained it all for you ashton why don't you go into more depth on what the topic is going to be about today so tv shows um we're just gonna be talking about tv shows that we have watched that we've loved they're on like our favorite list it could be on like netflix it could be on cable it could be on anything mm-hmm. um it could even be stuff we're watching right now that we really like and we want to talk about so ryan i'll let you hit it off girl what you watching um so we we kind of did this list here. Like we did a, my list and your list kind of thing. Right. And then we kind of combined them together. So I think what we'll do is we're going to go through the ones that we matched on. And then we'll kind of go into the ones that we don't watch that are the same. Like each person will then kind of explain their own show kind of stuff. I see. I see. Yeah. Okay. So the first one that we, that we have on here is The Office. And I know if Jose is listening... Uh, our real, our special friend Jose, he is. Why is an, he special? That's because up, man. because there are two shows that he has uh, that I have on this list that he is very knowledgeable about. Um, the Office is one of them, and uh, man, it's just it's such a good show. It's such a good it show. Um, who's your favorite? Who's your favorite character? Um, I'm kind of I kind of like Jim. Really? Yeah, yeah. Like just because. Dwight is good. Dwight <laughs> and Jim together, I guess, are good. So it's kind of like the combination of them together. Yeah. Um, then again, when Michael, like when they took away Steve Carell, um, the show kind of fell apart. So I don't know. Maybe it is Steve Carell's character. I think it might have been that kind of was my favorite time. character. Um, well, I don't know. What does that mean? If like, so if well, Steve Carell... When he left, it was kind of like so much of a glue. And then he left. Does that mean that I liked S- Steve Carell the most? No, 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 no. It just means that the dynamic was thrown off. So oh, like, okay. Like the chemistry. Yeah. Was... They didn't have that with Will Ferrell. Even though Will Ferrell is what's up. I love Will Ferrell, But it just wasn't the best fit yeah, for yeah, that show. Yeah. Um, I love Steve Carell. Um, he's typically not my type of humor. 
but the way that he mixed so well with every other character for the show which is awesome and it's fucking insane like literally he's fucking insane in the show. <laughs> i <laughs> declare bankruptcy <laughs> He's just throwing watermelons off the, oh like, my God. Off the roof and it hits Stanley's car. <laughs> He's like, is that a hate crime? <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's that's very much like, yeah, man, there's just so much of that. Did you watch the British version of The Office? Did you watch? No, no. I watched it's, an episode and I was like, meh. <laughs> it's very weird because like, if you watch the first episode of of the first season, first off, in in the British version of The Office, has a lot of people in there that are very famous British actors. Um, yeah. But like they, uh, they have um, the first episode of the British version of The Office is the exact same ver- is the exact same first episode of the American Office. I don't know if there, the other ones are either, uh, like the exact same script and everything. But um, I know that the first one is is very either very much the same or is a hundred percent the same. Um, I think it's probably very very much. But not not because Ricky not to a T. Ricky Gervais is the producer of that show of both of them, yeah. right? Like he's the both of them. I, I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. He even um he even uh, showed up in one of the one of the episodes too. Oh yeah, too, he did. He um, did for the interview or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wasn't he yeah. like really clumsy? Is that the one? Or was he really was or something no, like no, that? No. There was some sort of variant. No. Oh no, they show up and then and then Steve Carell and him look at each other. And they kind of like eye up and down, and then they kind of walk away or something like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That and was, I think. That, yeah, go ahead. I think he also shows up um, uh, when they were bringing in interviews for people to take uh, Michael's job. Or, like, yeah, uh, Jim yeah, came in. yeah, yeah. I re- that was what I was gonna say. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just, I just gotta be really, gotta really make sure that I'm gonna be able to get back home to the Finger Lakes before, <laughs> before I start my job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Finger Lakes guy. I think he's the he's the best candidate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, The Office is good, man. It's just like it's just one of those good shows. Like, I don't. But then again, like I don't know. There's just something about The Office when when Steve Carell leaves that it just gets thrown whack. And there's a whole season after that, isn't there? There's like a whole either season or season and a half. Like that's yeah. after that. That I just mm-hmm. was kind of like, mm, all right, dude. They. They pretty much killed Will Ferrell, like literally in the show. <laughs> <laughs> How many like, times have you have you seen The Office, like all the way through? Uh, about five times. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I've only I've only seen The Office one one time through, but that doesn't necessarily mean I didn't like. I mean, I it's only because I just watch other shows. So, but after it just felt like after I watched The Office, I feel like for for. If I go and watch a show and I go from beginning to end, I like the show. Like there's obviously that's there's something special about it. If I've watched right. it and I get about halfway through like the the run and it just isn't working, then I kind of just bounce off of it. Then obviously it's not like the show that I like to watch. Um but yeah, I mean you got anything else you want to talk about the office? Uh no, no, not really other than uh you know Dwight impersonating Leatherface by <laughs> skinning the fucking practice dummy for CPR. I remember that. It's only that's that's like a beginning of an episode, isn't it? Like, and then it just runs the intro like normal. Dude, oh man! Because so every time you get in trouble, Michael be like. We're not mad. We're just disappointed. And then Wallace is like, no, we're mad. <laughs> um, like, why did you have to do it? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, speaking of people that are mad, but in the other mm. sense of the word, uh, South Park also made onto our list of Ooh, TV shows that yes. we love. I love South Park. And... Uh, I'm actually going through the whole entire sh- uh, run again up to the current part. Um, I I did try to watch South Park uh, all the way through on Netflix, 
and then they took it off and then Hulu got the exclusive exclusive rights to it. So for the, like the past four years, I have not been able to watch South Park. And then I got Hulu subscription, which allowed me to watch South Park again. And so I've, I'm going through the run again, uh, watching shows that I or episodes that I remember. And then now I'm currently in the current season. So now I'm like seeing stuff that I've not seen before. And there's just so many times that South Park is like, oh my god, I cannot yeah. believe they just said that. <laughs> like, yeah. oh my gosh. Do it's... you have any uh do you have any South Park memories? South Park memories. Um, I gotta say, most of my funny memories come from Randy, Stan's dad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do you awesome. want some do you want to sit out here in the snow a little bit longer? Yeah. <laughs> do you I'm going to McDonald's. Do you want me to get at you anything? Chicken nuggets. <laughs> Any sauce? Sweet and sour. <laughs> that was the uh blockbuster episode was when they when Randy bought a blockbuster and <laughs> they, they had to stay there for <laughs> Halloween. Oh my god. They did the shining uh parody. Yeah, I also like the episode where he's fucking carting his balls around in a wheelbarrow. And like, <laughs> oh, he so he has he job. has testicular cancer, so he has to <laughs> so he can get his green card. <laughs> oh my god! He shoved his balls into his microwave and turned it off. <laughs> <laughs> the question Just is, does it? Cancer. The question is, does it work? That's the question. <laughs> Does it work? Yeah. Yes. It uses More, radiation to heat your food. But the thing is, is like, if you stuck your balls in the microwave, I think your balls would explode. <laughs> like, yeah, they point. wouldn't enlarge to that point. But... No. No, they would not. <clears throat> um, yeah, that's crazy. I mean, I'm not like a scientist or anything. <laughs> pretty um, sure your balls don't grow bigger than your head. <laughs> I will say they're... There was a time where, like, in the current season, or not the current season, a couple seasons ago, they uh, did a, I think it was season 15 or something, where, or, I don't know, I can't remember, but they did a whole season where everything continuously moved on to the next episode, so, like, nothing ever reset. Like, in theory, every episode happens in the timeline, right? Um, But... And then it's all explained on that it is the same timeline. For example, they say, "Oh, why?" But but Kenny dies in every epi- or in the, every first season, like every episode in the first season, and then that's explained of like, "Oh, his he has a superpower where he can die, knowledge knowledgeably know that he ex- like has died." But yep. everyone forgets that he died and that he and then he's like born and grows over that time period. It's weird. I, I don't know how that works out, but that's how they explain it. But in this season, they actually continued everything so that the, the town actually continued growing. And they oh, did yeah. a uh, it was the Whole Foods season where they like tried to get a Whole Foods <laughs> and then it just progressively moved on. It and just on and like on. spread like cancer, dude. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> They got really bad really quick. Fucking Mysterion, man. Yeah. Watch out for him. That hooded little bastard. Yeah. The uh the superhero ones are funny. The uh I watched the Black Friday episode. That was pretty good too. Of uh, when they were making funny Game of Thrones and whatnot. And then they did uh Oh man, there's like, like so many times, and it, what's even weirder is like if you go back and watch South Park early episodes, it's kind of funny to listen to like what they're making fun of because it's not relevant anymore. So you're like, because like I watched a, for example, I watched an episode a couple seasons ago was a uh, tweak was getting weirded out because he thought Kim Jong Un was gonna bomb like oh, the United yeah. States, and so. Uh, he, so to help him with his anxiety, they got him fidget spinners. <laughs> and so he was like spinning them around on his fingers. I'm like five years from now, that is going to be so irrelevant that no one's going to know what the hell that actually meant. <laughs> Dude is so fucking funny too, because, uh, I like <laughs> the president was like, just totally 
fueling the fucking fire too. I know that kid. He's just fucking with you. Probably shitting those. Oh cupcakes. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> where uh, where Mr. Garrison's just yeah. <laughs> tweeting out still. Oh god. He's like, why the fuck is he doing this? <laughs> yeah. Freak fuck out. Oh my god. Um. But yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah, I guess the reason why I brought up South Park was on my list was because I'm currently watching it. Obviously, it was right in the, right off the tip of my tongue because I'm still going through it, and um, I think it's taken me like a month to get through them all, maybe. Mm. But uh, it's kind of well, crazy how the kids have just kind of grown into themselves, and then it, Matt and Trey have written other characters to kind of sustain the show without the kids as well. So that's pretty crazy. But we need the kids though. Yes. Yes, you do. (laughs) Well, speaking of relevancy, uh, brings us to our next show. Um, uh, that 70 show. Um, it's not super relevant anymore. It's kind of one of those throwback shows. Uh, if you will, uh, did you ever watch any of that, Ryan? It's one of my all time favorites. I, um, I did watch that 70 show. Up until, um, who's that guy that played Venom? Like, I can't remember. What oh, are you is. talking about, uh, fucking, I, I, f- I forget the actor's Eric name. name. His name is Eric. Eric, that's right. When he left, and when Ashton Kutcher left, I stopped watching. Ashton Kutcher came back. Yeah, eventually, but, like, there's just this dull area. And after that happened, I was kind of like, yeah, okay. Yeah. But Eric he, got replaced with some pretty boy named fucking what's his face? Uh Randy. Fucking <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> it wasn't even that cool. He's way too nice. It's fucking annoying. But um fun fact for you, Mila Kunis lied uh essentially to get onto that show. She was underage um when she was in the, on that show. She, they required them to be 18 or older. So she was making out with Ashton Kutcher underage. <clears throat> you. <laughs> How but they're married now. So. How much younger? I think she was like 15 or 16. Oh, okay. That is kind of gross. If she was 15, that's a big difference from 16. <laughs> like Legally, but, yes. Yes. Um, <laughs> Body wise, no. <laughs> she Not only grew. In our state. <laughs> She only really grew after she got pregnant, so. <laughs> that's, that's true. Um, but I don't know. I always liked that show because it was like the, uh, um, perfect like family and friends combination that you'd see in like, you know, kind of more like a real world scenario, but more dumb, like, <laughs> like uh, Red Foreman, like the hard ass dad. Yeah. Um, fucking played it perfect. Um. And Eric, scrawny fucking nerdy kid, um, who just gets shit on all the time. Uh, you got the dumbass, and that was Michael Kelso, who was falling off the water tower every year. Um, <laughs> and they had the stoner hide. And uh, yeah, his mom left him and uh, moved in with Eric. Super jealous that uh, Eric was Bone and Donna. Stone Cold <laughs> Fox, by the way, gets your tits and oranges and new black. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> um, Side note. And you got Fez, man. You got a little diversity that they threw in there because diversity. that was the time. Because <laughs> yeah. that's when that whole thing started. Um, and I don't know. It's just like a super wacky group. Um bunch of different characteristics that kind of molded together it was really fun uh made a lot of good moments in the show and especially like my favorite and least favorite episode is the last episode where <clears throat> eric comes home from africa on new year's eve um and everybody on the show is essentially reunited and they meet downstairs in the basement one last time get really high <laughs> and then they start going up and they're counting down and then you hear like once they get to five the screen goes black and you get to hear them count until one and then the show's over so it was kind of a really cool way to a end bittersweet it bittersweet yeah but one of those bittersweets you're like 
oh that was kind of good but fuck you it's over kind of yeah. thing um i don't know you gotta you kind of got to watch them grow up too because that was kind of a long show some yeah. of them were still rather young so i don't know i thoroughly enjoyed it i've watched it through three times so well, that's good i know it's on netflix right it's still on netflix right Yes, it is. It's still on Netflix. Yeah. Yep. Um, well, speaking of a group of kids that stick together that's on Netflix, Stranger Things is also a TV show that both of us like. We really, oh, yes. We both love Stranger Things. Um, this was crazy. The story behind me watching this show, um, I actually got like a lot of people hooked on this show. And it was only because... I kind of knew how to present it, I think. And it was because uh, a lot of people got turned off on it. So when I watched, I watched, uh, sometimes Netflix will say like, watch the trailer when there's like a new show that they're going to do. And so I watched the trailer a week before the first, before the whole series was going to come out. And I was like, whoa, what is this? This is crazy. Like, this is, this is awesome. Like, I'm totally going to watch this. <laughs> and then I watched the first couple episodes and I'm like, like the first two episodes. And I was like, oh man, this is kind of going on a little bit. And then the third episode is the one I tell everyone to stick through. Like I tell everyone you gotta watch until episode three of the first season. If you get to episode three and you're like, nope, this is still stupid. Then they're not going to like it because that's about as much as you're going to get because there's just so much information that gets thrown at you yeah. in the first two episodes that you're kind of like, I don't know what I'm supposed to know up to this. And then when the third episode happens, you're kind of like, oh, OK, this is what's happening. Yeah. Um, and that's what I told everyone at work. I told this girl that uh, she was really into like Supernatural. And so oh, um, oh, and I wait, what? I fucking love that show. Supernatural. Well, we oh, might yeah. talk about it if we have time. Uh, but Stranger, Th but going back to Stranger Things is like she liked S Supernatural, so I was like, oh man, you should totally watch Stranger Things. And I and she goes, well, yeah, I watched the first episode. I'm like, no, 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 watch till the third episode, and then come back and talk to me. And she's like, all right. And then she came back out like the next day and told me like, oh man, I love Stranger Things. Like <laughs> it's so awesome. I'm like freaking hell yeah it is. <laughs> it's so good um and uh yeah dude stranger things i and and because the thing is is i love seeing when there's really good kid actors because when that happens that only means that they're just gonna get better like if they're good now they're just gonna get better if they don't fuck it up <laughs> like in their, yeah. li their personal lives but like, like macaulay culkin <laughs> i mean there you go but uh <laughs> but i mean if you go back and watch like for example um, if you watch the professional, the movie, Le uh, Leon, the professional, Natalie Portman's in that movie and she's like 14 or 12, 14 and you watch her and you're like, wow, she's a really good actress. And like that to me, watching that movie alone proved to me that she is by far one of the best women actresses, like the best women actors out there today. And, uh, and it's kind of like that when I watch all these kids in stranger things, I'm like, man. You know, they're just going to get better. Like, I can see them in other stuff. They're just going to... The way that they deliver things actually seems like it's an emotional situation. True. Um, but I also think that's the the brothers that are good directors as well. Yeah. On that. That's true, too. Because, like, um, with, like, the kid actor thing, like, then once you know you like an actor, you'll be more inclined to see certain movies that you normally wouldn't just because that one actor's in there because you know that they're good. Yeah, for example, um, that one <clears throat> kid that... Oh, gosh, I can't remember his name. Um, he's, uh, I'm looking it up now, but he's in it. Oh, um, fucking he's, uh, the guy who played it. Finn, or... Finn is, is, is the real guy's name. He plays Mike in the show, but his name is Finn. Oh, oh, um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was in, he was in it as well. Um, the guy who played it is also one of the, um, uh, main characters in the show called Hemlock Grove. <laughs> Sadly, was um, ended too soon, but mm. uh, another good show if you want to check that out. But <clears throat> yeah, any uh, also, anything you want to talk about Stranger Things though? Anything? Oh, Stranger Things, dude! I mean, just watch that intro. I mean, if you don't like that intro, oh yeah, 
I mean, it, they it's have, the like, one uh, Netflix show that I sit through that intro every time. Their intro is so good. Oh, it's God, like it brings so you back to that arcade kind of. Yeah, fucking love it, dude. It is good. The music's really great. I love the music. Um, yeah, I mean, what what can you like? Monsters, superpowers, and science experiments, and arcade music. Mm-hmm. Very eighties. I mean, well, what else I'll, do you need? That was another thing. <laughs> when I showed the show to my dad, it's funny. Uh, so the main character's name is Mike. My dad's name is Mike. And uh, and then I asked him, how old were you when you, in the 80s? And he goes, I don't know, like middle school? Which is how old Mike is in the show. <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> I, I thought it was kind of funny. Um, but yeah, but speaking of also sticking with the Netflix theme, Black Mirror is another Ooh. show that we yes. watch. On Netflix, how about you take uh, the reins on Black so, Mirror for a bit? So Black Mirror, for those of you who don't watch it, it's basically a show that you can watch any episode. They don't align with one another. They're basically separate short stories crammed into like they're like mini movies essentially. Yeah, because I think they're an hour. Yeah, they're like yeah. an hour. Um, it's basically just like weird shit. The only thing I can compare it to with is like tech. Twilight Zone. Y- yes, very Twilight <laughs> yeah. Zone. Yes. And it's just all like future tech type scenarios. Like this latest season, they essentially did like a, it's kind of like a spoof of, um, or more so like a parody of Star Trek Mm -hmm. where it was all uh, virtual reality, um, but like way more enhanced than what we have now. And they, uh, they all got trapped in there on this guy's private um, server. And he just, like people he didn't like, he would trap their minds, uh, their visual, um, not or their visual. that he liked a little too um, much, as or well. they liked a little too much. Yeah, yeah. a little creepy. Um, he would put their digital selves in his part of the game so he could make them do whatever they wanted. But they're all eunuchs, so I mean, what the fuck could you do? <laughs> um, <laughs> no private parts to mess with, yeah. but um. There's stuff like that, and then there's this other crazy one. I don't know if you watched this. I've watched you... them all. Oh, you watched them all? Yeah. Um, I was disappointed about this season. There's only a couple of really good ones. Other ones. Yeah. Suck. Well, also this season kind of ruined. Not getting into spoiler territory. There's an episode that kind of tried to do what a previous episode did, and instead of it being its own story it kind of tries to do something else along those lines i'm trying to be very vague without spoiling if you can catch me on this ashton but you know what i'm talking about right the current season where they tried to they tried to connect some dots and you're kind of like well wait <laughs> like what are... are you talking about the one where they are i think it's the uh, season ending like the... episode season is it, the, is it the like the dating app thing no it's the one that has to do with the museum museum yeah where the uh girl like has her she has to charge up her car so she walks into this big museum oh yeah to, okay so that episode i didn't really like that much like, i i like the premise of it but then at the ending of that episode where it tries to do or like throughout the episode i guess where it kind of explains a little of other things, and you're kind of like, well, I don't know about that. Like, like uh, I don't okay. know. Well, I I enjoyed that one, but I, I see what you're saying. The overall plot, yes, but the subtle one was not. I didn't. I wasn't kind of. I liked yeah. when, like, like you're saying, a very. I like the Twilight Zone theming of it, and then that episode kind of ruins that. Mm. of the episode of the fact that you know of what it is but anyway yeah I'm, now we're starting to get closer and closer into the territory of spoilers <laughs> so but anyway yeah there, there's a couple of good episodes like i like the one that had the guy that plays um uh, uh what's his name in star wars you know what i'm talking about which one in star wars episode seven who husk oh is that what his name is husk in Star Wars. Uh, yeah. Um, Husk. Star Wars Husk. Uh, yeah. General Husk. Hask. Is that his name? Is Husk. Darth Husk? Now I'm really confused. <laughs> Hold on now. Continue on. What's your favorite one? And I'm looking up mine. Well, one of my favorite ones was uh, that one where um, 
he goes out to this research facility and they have him test out this game could air oh, quotes. that is a really good episode that is a very good episode um and it's a scary game and uh it's, it's very like, um you know, it reminds me of uh oh gosh who's the guy that made metal gear now i'm really no i'm gonna have to look at all these other things hito kojima it's like he reminds me of him like because he of the like mentality of like yeah. he would go that far into making stuff it's like really dark <laughs> hux general hux his name is doom null gleason doom null gleason yeah red hair general hux he's the guy that like talks with kylo a lot oh yeah 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 okay. the you know the episode that he's in where he's like a robot kind of thing he's like an ai but yes. he's uh yes yeah, yeah. i know exactly what you that was yeah. weird as fuck by the way so. that was weird but it's like a weird concept like who would it's kind of like that could happen kind of thing that's what i do like black about black mirror is like all of the technology could happen and if not is happening like if you read some news articles it's like, just not commercially available yeah yeah exactly like basically made a sex doll out of her dead husband you exactly know, that's... yeah pretty much eventually she does that but yes i mean yeah. wouldn't you though i mean <laughs> i mean not out of my husband <laughs> <laughs> hopefully oh. a wife <laughs> yes. you would your wife but you fuck my husband he can die he can die forever I don't want to see him ever again yeah. it's fucked up man yeah it is um, <laughs> speaking of fucked up Rick and Morty <laughs> <laughs> um, Rick and Morty is one of my favorite shows unfortunately right now it's in kind of this death limbo right now um, but the reason why I do love this show it's it's almost like an adult oriented Back to the Future, and I know a lot of people say that, but it is sort of that like it's so smartly written that it's crazy. Like there's moments in the show where if you look back into like there's a scene where uh, they go on a mission and blah blah blah. Rick is kind of like he, Rick is an asshole. Like that's just how his whole character is. Um, but so he finds this like sentient not sentient maybe that is the word for it but this being that essentially can control like a whole planet like it affects everybody and then eventually she just controls the whole planet now rick likes this being whatever this is and um and so it, they like essentially break up with rick and so rick goes home and at the end of this of the episode he's like building something and then he makes this like um acid thing takes out this little alien puts it down pours the uh acid on it kills the alien and then he puts it on an like a lever thing and it's eventually gonna spill on him but he moves out of the way at the last second because he's just crying and so it's like interestingly placed and it's the reason why i like back to the future is where the writing can continue a story without actually having characters say something like, I feel like that can, that's one of the best parts about writing or animation in je in this situation um, where they can just like explain a story without actually having characters talk. And there's like a lot of other cool stuff that they do in the show, but I know you're not a fan of Rick and Morty. Is that right? Yeah. I mean, for Rick and Morty, I never get to watch a whole, I watched a couple episodes, um, but um, I always end up having other things to watch. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, I I think it's it's just it's it's a very smart comedy, I guess, um, and it knows what it is, and I like that about that. Uh, but there's like p times where there, there's an episode where Rick and Morty and like the rest of the family are in a house, and then there's a parasite in the house. And so the parasite will essentially build off of uh, fake memories and then put itself in the situation so that it eventually could take over the planet. So, like, it would essentially – if we're having a conversation in a room, right, and we're like, oh – so in this episode, he actually takes a notebook paper out and he writes a number. So if we're sitting in the room and it's just you and me talking and we're like, blah, 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 blah. 
I'm going to write on this piece of paper that there are two people in here. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, like, a talking giraffe comes in and goes, yeah, yeah, da-da-da-da-da. And, and then they go, yeah, you you remember, remember the time where blah, 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 like, Mr. Giraffe? And then we would have this, like, fake memory about the giraffe to make it seem as if the giraffe is real. And it, but it implants this like fake memory, and then eventually the house is like overflowing with all these fake people. I don't know. It's really <laughs> cool, like how it just keeps going, and like the jokes will keep going. I don't know. There's, there's just some really good episodes that that they have, um, but some really good episodes of Rick and Morty. There are also some really good episodes of Game of Thrones, and this is one of Ooh. your favorite shows. I do watch it. But I don't. I'm not like caught up, and I'm not like a hundred percent into it. Into it. But you, on the other hand, are very into Game of Thrones. I am. I am. Now, I am not one of those guys that did read all the books. I heard the books are way better, mm-hmm. <clears throat> and I'm not going to dispute that because usually the books are better. But um, the show is actually written differently than the books. Uh, anyhow, well, so, now, <laughs> now they're yeah. really not written in the now, same way. You know, and that was to be intended. You know, that's kind of what he wanted to do. <clears throat> but I don't know, man. Like favorite characters. I mean, got to be the Hound, Jon Snow, and uh, ooh, I gotta have a third. But I, it's hard to choose because like there's so many good characters in the show. Um, most of them are dead. Yeah, exactly. But, <laughs> I mean, Khaleesi's pretty hot with all her dragons and shit. She's kind of a badass. She's going to be in the new Solo movie, too. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how, what her interest is, especially. It, it kind of seems like a love interest with Han, but I'm very much like, this doesn't... Well, I mean, I, it, it could make sense, but it'd be very weird to have like Solo in love with this other girl kind of thing because of, you know, Leia. But <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I guess we'll see how that goes. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know, man. Like, that show is insane. Like, I love the medieval fantasy, you know, genre. It's one of my favorite of all times in terms of cinema. And having a nice, like, well-done show that's fucking well-written um, really, really fucking captivates <clears throat> me uh, personally to just fucking watch it and just binge the fucking shit out of it but I can't be one of those guys that waits for all of them to come out I torture myself by fucking watching every episode as it comes out so I gotta wait a week in between every uh, episode okay. yeah I... my 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 dad's <clears throat> very into Game of Thrones as well like his, his shows that he watches are uh, Game of Thrones and uh, what else is there and The Walking Dead are like his two shows that he will not miss an episode. Like he has to watch it like that day or he wait, watches it the next day on demand or whatever. Yeah, I don't know, man. It's just I'm so caught up in it. I mean, there's so many names to remember because they introduce so many people and kill so many people. You got to that's the only hard thing for me is remembering all the names, mm-hmm. like all the people, because there's so many fucking people. But I just love the. Uh, the fucking violence and the sex and the dragons. It's like, Six. it's like the fucking best combination ever, dude. Uh-huh. <clears throat> well, speaking of medieval and fantasy stuff, well, I guess it wouldn't be so much fantasy, but speaking of like that sort of genre, you also like Spartacus, Ooh. which is unfortunately yeah. done, but, yes. but go ahead. It is on Netflix, though. Um, it is on Netflix? Really? I thought that was yep. an HBO show. Uh, no, I don't think oh, so. Oh, no. I think it was a show. Was it on Showtime or something like I that? I think it was on Showtime. Yeah. Um, Netflix. Uh, I watched it on Netflix when I watched it. So it might still be on there. Um, that's basically like Game of Thrones uh, without the fantasy part. You still get lots of sex, lots of violence. It's actually way bloodier than Game of Thrones. <laughs> like, way bloodier. Um, basically, the premise of the whole... You know, the whole show is uh, this guy named Spartacus. He gets enslaved, essentially, to be a gladiator uh, for his uh, dominus, which is basically his master, um, who keeps 
all these trained gladiators so he can fight and win and feed his family and be rich and a douchebag. Um, and you just get to see him go through so many fucking gnarly ass battles, crazy ass people. It also has, um, fuck. Um, I forget the actor's actor's name, but he plays as crook six in the, uh, in the show. He's this big fucking beefy dude. Uh, I don't know if you checked out the Shannara Chronicles on Netflix, but he's also in that. He's in a, he's in quite a few things, but <clears throat> they end up like getting like this tag team relationship where they're like doing two on two fights, and they face some like ungodly creatures and shit that you wouldn't even think <laughs> they'd be thrown in that show. It just kind of comes out of nowhere, it's like some weird fucking demon minotaur looking fucking thing. I don't know. But it's it's all about violence. Um, main character is trying to get back to his wife um, so he can save her. He's trying to get um, out of there. He ends up finding something out. Um, some shit goes down. A lot of chaos within that whole palace. Um, things do not go uh, very well for anybody at all. There's like this huge, massive, fucking bloodied event. Uh, I don't want to spoil anything, but my God, um, it gets fucking real, real quick. <laughs> now, now the thing about Spartacus, do you know the reasoning why it ended? What's that? Do you know the reason why it ended? Um, n- actually, no, not the reason why it ended, ended. I know I- they had to switch out one of the members of the cast because the original member uh, died. The original yeah, actor for Spartacus. Played... Yeah, for Spartacus. Yeah. Yeah. He died, and then they went on for like another season or two. But he he still did pretty good. Uh, I was not disappointed. I grew to like the the next actor as well. Mm-hmm. Um, it's always tough when you get a cast change uh, for the same character, but they look extremely similar. Um, so it's it wasn't it wasn't too far of a leap. Um, well, well, that's it was always pretty smooth. That- because yeah. I know that there's been some, there's been a character, there was a character in Game of Thrones that got switched out, and I was very like, who's this guy? <laughs> and yeah. it's like, oh, it's this person. And like, everyone's acting like they've seen this person before, and you're like, oh, wait. Oh, I guess that is that guy. Um, but yeah, but speaking of uh, paid networks, we're going back to HBO, and Silicon Valley is Ooh. also one of my favorite shows. Uh, to this current date it is just so it, it's another one of those things where like rick and morty is written very smart jokes and silicon valley is also in that situation where it's like it's this group of guys that have that are trying to make a business and it's almost seems really real like and that's what i've also heard is like the guys that write silicon valley are try are, have actually done research into situations that they've that past people have done and like uh you know from starting in a garage and like how do they continue on like doing stuff and it, it like becoming their own thing and then there's even uh talk about how they have gone into uh what is it what do they call it um the, the, oh, yeah, the, that people will do this as a job. They will come up with a concept, and then they will go and sell it to a company and then continue the process. Like, they've – and it, it's it's so crazy of just how they've continued to evolve this group of guys that have come together to make this cool idea. And it's crazy because, like, when you li- watch the show and then they explain to you what Pied Piper, the company that they – are doing the fake company is it's so crazy because it's like oh wow that's a really cool idea (laughs) like it's so like i wish that actually did exist (laughs) um but yeah i'm trying to look up the the director of this show because he's done a lot more other things um yeah but you have not seen silicon valley no i have i have you have all the way through. yes yes oh Um, okay I th- I believe I'm caught up. I have to check. You said the the new season's out already, right? 
episodes. Uh, season do? five is out. The, that's the only season I haven't watched. Because okay. Of... I'm caught up then um, with you. You turned me on to that show uh, and I binge watched the show. That's out of... right. Okay. So here's another thing. Do you know a guy that goes by the name of Mike Judge? Yes. Okay. Of course. Well, King of the he... Hill? Yes. Davis um, Divine? He is, I believe, the writer yes. of yes. Silicon Valley. Yeah. Yes, he is. Uh-huh. So that is also the other <clears throat> thing that makes it an office space. And for if you didn't watch King of the Hill or Beavis and Butthead or things like that. Uh, so, yeah. Fucking love uh, Mike Judge. He's so good. But, yeah, that's all, it's just like I, I just really, really like <laughs> Silicon Valley. It's so good. It's just so good. Um, but I guess we're going from the valley to the ranch because the oh, ranch my is God. another show. You love you loving these segues. I'm fucking uh, nailing them. Good, that was a good I'm segue. I'm nailing these. So you uh you like the ranch? You like the ranch? I this do. Is a, no. This is a Netflix show has two characters from another previous show that you liked. Yes, uh, and that you've that's already talked why, about. That's why I'm kind of a little biased of why I watched it in the first place. What got me to watch it? Was looking at the cast. Uh, also, anytime Netflix says original, I usually watch it because they're usually phenomenal. <clears throat> but yeah, there's, there's some... <laughs> yeah, I get what you're saying. <laughs> usually, like, they they, is, they is usually the have some word. good shit. They usually yeah. got some good shit. But <clears throat> you know, it was Ashton Kutcher and Danny Masterson. You know that were on that '70s show together. I knew they already had their dynamic down, so I knew they were gonna have that good chemistry right off the bat, and I knew it was gonna be fucking hilarious. Um, turns out they have that old dude, uh, what's his fucking name? Um, uh, Samuel Elliott, I think. Uh, I can look it up right now. Um, uh, who's the old dad, old farmer. He's funny as shit. He's the, like, hard-ass dad. Yep, Sam Elliott is his name. Yep, Sam Elliott. Uh, he is funny as shit. Um, because he's such a hard-ass, he's such a douche, like, to everybody. Um, He's got like that whole stubborn farmer thing going. Like, no, if we go out to eat, I'm always gonna have a steak. You eat salad, you get the fuck out of my house, kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and they always just get into all this trouble with their dad. And they're talking about having to be able to work on the ranch and be partners and all this crazy shit going on. But a lot of it, um, of course, um, with Ashton Kutcher, any time that he's in anything, there's usually he's in a relationship with somebody. You know, he's got to be like, he's got to be with somebody in every show he's in. I don't know what his thing is, but yeah, um, he's bounced around between like a few girls, and he's like this reconnected with this one girl that he wants to marry, and some shit goes crazy with some other chick. He knocks up, and I don't know, man. He he always has to be a player in every fucking thing he does. Just like in that 70s show where he was messing around with Jackie and every whore that spread his legs. <laughs> whore. <You know? laughs> yeah, dude. He even fucked Eric's sister. That's fucked up. But back to the ranch. <laughs> back to the ranch. Um, Fez even shows up for a little bit. But oh, that's funny. Ironically, he gets deported. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> wow. Um, that shit was funny. but um, So aren't aren't they brothers? Or isn't a... Yeah. So they're brothers in... Well, to explain, um, who are the brothers? The brothers are um, Ashton Kutcher and Daniel Ma- uh, David Masterson. Um, and they just fucking, they have that whole, like, kid brother kind of thing. They prank each other. They uh, <clears throat> they make fun of each other. They fucking hit each other. Basically, think of it like, if any of you watch that 70s show, it's basically the relationship that they had there. Um, they're pretty much the same characters as they were just growing up. Hmm. Um, yeah. It's well, pretty much the same. Speaking of a pair that are start as kids and they kind of move in as the adult versions of themselves. Psych is one, uh, is, is the final one that we're going to talk about because we're actually running out of time, which is crazy that we actually got to talk about every single one we wanted to talk about. Um, so Psych is the last show that we we're able to talk about. This is my fa- one of my favorite shows. Uh, it was taken off Netflix a couple of years ago, and it like saddened me because I was like, oh man, I just I didn't I didn't want to buy every single episode on iTunes because it it adds up. They're like 
tw- I think they're like twenty five dollars for season every season, and there's oh. like eight or nine seasons. And so then they just updated Amazon uh, Video, every Amazon Prime Video, and now they're all on there again. And I'm so happy. Like you can watch Psych again. And man, it's just this show is so special where it like just keeps going like it it it's always you can come back and watch it again and like be laugh at the same jokes that they just made like it's so good the chemistry between each character is even like it, it's so perfect like you can definitely tell from the beginning of the season when they all kind of just meet each other to the end of the season there's like so much of this chemistry that everyone's kind of grown into this little psych family and the characters grow into their own selves they're always coming in and out of the of each episode as they this is who this person is kind of thing um the chemistry between the two main characters are are just so are just so good it's just such a good show um also if you watch it on amazon you can watch it with like the facts like the there's like little it's called amazon x-ray and you can actually see facts about uh each episode as the show is going on so if you want to learn about psych too uh it's really cool i i learned that it, as funny as the show is set in santa barbara california the show was actually shot in vancouver canada and it was like and it, it's just so weird how they made vancouver look exactly like freaking like santa barbara um but the chemistry between gus and sean uh which are the two kind of main characters they're they've been friends since they were little kids and you could definitely see that between uh james and Dule. Um, which are Dule Hill plays Gus and James plays uh, Sean. But anyway, like it's just, it's just so cool to see these guys like be those characters. And then when they did the movie last year, um, the Christmas special thing, it all, it was just literally another episode of psych and it was just an hour long. Or I mean, I guess the whole show is an hour, but it was just, uh, it almost seemed like they never left it. it like the timeline continued and this is just you're now checking in on them again kind of thing um but it's so good it's just it's just such a it, you, you cause yourself a disservice if you don't watch psych but really um, yeah it's just that good of a show it's a funny show it's also a detective type show so if you like those kind of things with a little bit of humor um you you got all it was it was also on the usa network so there's a lot of wwe crossovers so if you like that kind of stuff too they they pop in here and there like uh-huh. john cena is uh is somebody is related to somebody i'm not going to spoil it because it's always kind of cool when he like pops in and you're like what <laughs> so he's related to somebody so you got to go watch psych if you haven't seen it you kind of it's like the office you have to see the office at least one time through Psych, yeah. it's the same thing. You have to see Psych at least one time through. It's just so good. I'll have to give it a shot. Yeah. Yeah. But, dude, we made it. We made it through the whole thing. We, we got a little it. bit to spare. But this leaves us to our to our closing statements. So, um, Ashton, uh, why don't you say where you, we can find you at and yeah. maybe what you've been – what you kind of do here uh, on Primal Target? Because I guess we're not really – do we want to number these or do we want to just kind of have them come out as they come out? I guess it's what do you mean? Like, do we want to say that this is episode X or do we want to say like, do we want to leave them numberous and so that we can just post them whenever we want? Uh, I don't know. That's a good question. Shit. Um, I didn't even think about that. Okay. <clears throat> um, this will be episode one. Because yeah. we introed it as episode one. So we said it was a new podcast and whatnot. So I guess. True. I guess. We'll I guess we'll, we'll come up with that later. So I guess for that, we won't, we won't do the full bit, but where can we find you at? If, if we wanted to connect with you personally. So personally, if you want to connect with me, you can find me Ashton underscore Stom. You hit me up with any game requests or stuff you want to see on YouTube or on Twitch. Uh, all that good shit. You just hit me up or just say hi because I'm lonely. <laughs> and you can uh, follow me on all social media at Ryan A.E. Moore. 
Uh, and yeah, I'm kind of all over the place. I'm <laughs> predominantly on YouTube. I guess currently, not right now, because I, you guys are kind of taking over. But I edit. I'm editing all those guys' videos. Yeah. So if you want to go check out uh, my stuff, you're gonna have to go a little bit farther back in the timeline. But uh, you got more yeah. stuff coming though. You got some yeah, stuff. Y- yes, I have a very secret project that I've been working on, and I hope that everyone kind of enjoys it. But uh, yeah, I hope so. I, that's yeah. that's gonna be <clears throat> wrapping up the first ever episode of PT thirty six hundred. PT was a good episode, 3, man. Yeah, not too bad for a first time. I just yeah. popped my cherry. It feels great. Yeah, for your first ever podcast. Well, yeah. I mean, not to talk about maybe there was some secret episode that we recorded but anyway there's a, <laughs> <laughs> it's always it, it was very good though um by the way if you guys are wondering who is the person that made the intro song to this podcast uh it is actually uh between giants you can go over to soundcloud search it you can find it over there i'll have the link in the description below if you're watching on youtube if you're listening to the podcast well, it's just go to SoundCloud, search Between Giants. He's there. He's also on Spotify. Go check him out. He's a personal friend of mine, um, and it's awesome that we, we he made this yeah. song. Uh, you know, we Hell asked him guy. if we could use it, and he said sure. And so there it is. Um, so yeah, it was uh, that is the person who makes that. You'll be hearing it actually at the end of this episode as well. So yeah, that's kind of so. wrapping it up. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, my voice is so hoarse now. I'm just yeah. getting over being sick. I don't always sound like this. I'll sound slightly less annoying. Um, Though you sound <laughs> better than what you had previously because you bought a new microphone. What yeah, I got that Blue Yeti. What a, yeah, what a yeah, voice. That's what I'm also talking into right now as well. As yeah. well as you're there talking we through Discord as well. If you ever question whether or not he's uh dropping off every so often you didn't do it that much but like every so often you'd be kind of like pixelated kind of thing and so that was that's that bit so oh anyway. sometimes you you cut out but you know oh yeah it doesn't matter i'm recording the whole thing so yeah. <laughs> um that's true but yeah no it's been it's it, it was a good podcast i really actually i feel that we have so many ideas there's there's at least uh, 10 other episodes of this show that will be made because we have the, all those topics and you're going to want to stay tuned. So make sure you're definitely... They only get better. better. They only get better. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> um, but yeah, in the comment section below, if you're on YouTube, put what is your favorite uh, TV shows that you like? Like, put down there. Or maybe you liked one of the ones that we said and maybe put down in what's your favorite episode of the shows that we've talked about. Um fuck and uh i forgot powerpuff girls damn it oh man (laughs) um and also if you want to uh if you're listening to the audio version of the podcast you can tweet at us at primal uh at primal underscore target over there on twitter you can go and uh tweet at us and on the share of the podcast because i I know it gets tweeted out as well so yeah that's gonna be it thank you ashton for joining and, yeah uh, i think that's gonna thanks be thanks for uh, co-hosting there ryan yeah thank you for co-hosting yeah hopefully oh, at some point in time we get we get some uh we get some worse people on here but for now that's on back us. but yeah. you know we good we good we yeah. gucci we gucci <laughs> are we allowed to say that <laughs> um, um we all got gooch so you know that is I Sarah. mean, hopefully true. <laughs> if not, falls, you're you're falling your apart down there. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's gonna be it. I'm trying to like, I don't know. I, I'm sure the listener at this point's like, they're just dragging it on. Yes, we are just dragging it on. It's an hour show. We have to make an hour show. <laughs> so <laughs> don't you fucking judge me. You're listening yeah. for free. Damn it. Exactly. I have it's it's only thirty more seconds that we got. I gotta banter a little bit longer, and then I can easily just go on and say that the show is over. But and for now, we have just a couple more seconds. <laughs> just trying to get ten seconds, nine, eight, eight seven, six, five, four, three, two, two one. one. We'll see you next episode. Hey guys, it's Ryan again. Thanks so much for checking out PT3600. If you guys want to listen to the full official song of PT3600, 
It's Every Night by Between Giants featuring Violet Hart. Between Giants is a good buddy of mine, Tyler Burgage, and he is amazing. You can listen to him on SoundCloud and Spotify right now. He's got tons of other great tracks for you to listen to over there. For YouTube listeners, links are provided in the description below. Thanks once again to Between Giants, and also thanks to you for listening.